Picture 13 year old David. Braces. Bowl cut. Brown plaid shorts that seemingly don't match with anything at all. <laughs> Standing tall at 4 foot 11 and for the very first time about to step into a small plane, not as a passenger, but as a pilot. I started flying lessons when I was 13 years old. I still vividly remember my first flight lesson. As I climbed into the cockpit, the smell of old musty leather permeated the air. I was so short I had to sit on phone books just to see over the dash. I was surrounded by a sea of confusing gauges and dials. Buttons on my left, switches on my right. It was overwhelming. My instructor was explaining the flight controls to me and soon indicated that I would be taking over and my heart started to pound. I was gripped with fear. How was I supposed to manipulate this seemingly impossibly complex vehicle? We taxied out to the runway and I slowly advanced the throttle forward. The airplane lurched into action, building airspeed, going faster and faster and faster until we ever so gently lifted him into the air. I was flying and everything changed. The feelings of fear and anxiety were washed away by wonderment and excitement and pure joy. You see, flying unlocked something truly special for me. It was a sense of freedom like no other. The ability to soar above communities and take in life from a fresh perspective, it was truly freeing, yet one thing always frustrated me. Flying wasn't practical. It was either a rigid, time-intensive, expensive process used to connect two faraway cities, or a hobby for fun that just didn't quite make sense for daily life. Well, that all changed one day in the summer of 2017, right here in the San Francisco Bay. Because on that day, I saw an air taxi fly. Well, to be fair, not quite an air taxi. This could better be likened to an electric flying jet ski. But <laughs> on that day, I saw the power of electric propulsion enable what I like to call personal aviation, the intersection of flight with our daily lives. I was so inspired that day that I went on to work at Hyundai and at Boeing as a conceptual designer, working to bring vehicles like this just a little closer to reality. Now, the air taxi industry has come a long way since that day in 2017. There are over 200 companies working across the space, which has blossomed into an industry called urban air mobility, UAM for short. UAM is essentially the aerial rideshare services that utilize vehicles often referred to as eVTOLs, standing for electric vertical takeoff and landing. You can think of these vehicles as the flying Ubers of the sky that take off and land vertically from local helipad terminals called vertiports. Now, let me pause here and note that when you talk air taxis, people tend to think flying cars and, of course, the Jetsons. <laughs> well, let me dispel some myths. Sadly, these vehicles won't be taking off and landing from your driveway. And unless you have a couple million dollars to spare, you probably won't be owning an EV tall aircraft yourself. And at least to the extent of my knowledge, no, these vehicles won't be folding up into briefcases. But the ability to commute to and from work via the air Maybe not too far off. Picture this. You live in Santa Cruz, but you have a flight out of SFO in just a couple hours. You open your rideshare app, and one of the options is an air taxi. So you book it. A vehicle comes to your door and drops you off at the local Vertiport just a few minutes away. There you board a waiting eVTOL aircraft, which flies you 15 minutes over the mountains to a Vertiport SFO, where it's a short walk to the passenger terminal. Round trip, 25 minutes. Now, compare that to if you had driven, the hour plus drive coupled with traffic and the frustration that we know so deeply here in the Bay Area. And the cost? Ah, comparable to an Uber. Sounds a bit far-fetched, right? Well, let me tell you where we're at today. There are hundreds of companies working across the air taxi industry, from the vehicles themselves to vertiport infrastructure to autonomy to battery technology and regulatory development. You may not be able to tell the difference between a Boeing and an Airbus, but take a look at a lot of the vehicles across the industry. 
there are stark differences. And this is exciting. This is exciting because it represents one of the largest aerospace design challenges in the past 50 years. And as a conceptual designer, that's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> but beyond the vehicles themselves, the intersection of air taxis with our daily lives is at the vertiport. Now, vertiports are largely targeted towards more urban settings, but there are concepts ranging from at airport locations to various points of interest, even to more rural sites. There's even concepts like this one from Urban Airport, which depict how vertiports can be thought of more as a customer-centric experience, uh, more akin to commercial air terminals. Now, vertiports are largely in the concept phase, but they provide an early look at the future of cities. To illustrate this, let me refer to Marchetti's constant. Now, Marchetti's constant states that the average commute throughout history is about 30 minutes each way, an hour total. Why does this matter? Well, this matters because the commute shapes our cities. By way of example, let's turn back in time to ancient Paris and ancient Rome, which, at the time, both walking cities. As we progress with rail, we see London in 1870, and then early streetcars in 1915 Chicago. And then finally, the automobiles we know today in Atlanta in 2010. Our method of, of uh, transportation fundamentally shapes the fabric of our cities. It affects where we live, where we work, and who we connect with. As battery technology progresses over the next decade to enable more and more range out of air taxi services, UAM is poised to expand this yet again. Just think how your life would be different if close by could be cities apart. Now, air taxis are still a ways out from any sort of cost or scale comparable to ground-based rideshare. Regulatory pathways still have a lot of ways to go before they're fully in place. Early prototypes are still years out from mass production. Airspace can't handle low-level air traffic at scale, and notably, a whole lot of infrastructure still has to be developed. But what I'm so enthused about is, even if you don't agree with the bold performance claims or operational cost targets or development timelines, UAM is coming, and it will affect each of you. There are many challenges ahead, but these challenges represent we're on the cusp of creating something truly impactful from scratch. We're at an inflection point now where every small decision can propagate into huge impacts in the future. I hope you'll join 13-year-old David in bringing this journey of bringing the freedom of flight a little closer to reality. And I'll leave you with a quote that hangs beside my bed. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Thank you. Thank you.